Hi, it's Rob from the Russian Vulcan. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on how to do layering. For this video I'm going to be using one of the Ultramarines Vitrix guard that I used for the shading video as well. So I'll show you how we're going to layer up the armour using a few different colours and how to do that. So we're first going to start by using Citadel Macrag Blue. This is to reapply the base colour back to the armour, leaving the shade in the recesses. And the idea behind this video is when I'm doing the usual tutorials, you'll get like a 30 second burst at high speed showing how the paint's going on. And you'll see that in a small area or maybe a couple of small areas, but you won't see the whole figure being done. Now I thought that a video of the entire model, the power armour being painted on it, will be quite useful because you'll see the areas that I'm painting it on. And you should hopefully be able to see the reasons why as well. So when we're adding this, I'm aiming for the areas that are going to be catching the most light to get the most of the lighter coloured paint. So we're here reapplying the base colour and the only areas that you're really not going to apply this base colour back is the underside of maybe arms and legs and areas that are going to be completely shaded. So in the case of the shield here, you want to leave a little bit more of the shade in the recesses where it's going to be cast in the shadow if the light is coming from above. You want to carry that on across the whole model as well. So if you have details that stick out from the model, the area underneath is going to be a little bit more shaded. So you're not going to have that base colour and the highlights until a little bit lower down from that. You'll see what I mean with that on the shield itself. And how we work on the colour of the shields. Probably would see it on the chest too, but he's got his blade in the way quite nicely there, so it's, it makes that difficult to get the brush in there to do it accurately and also difficult to see even if you did. As you can see here, reapplying the colour back to the knee pad and leaving slightly more shade at the top of the knee pad because you've got that overhanging piece of the armour. So if you've got things overhanging, then you're not going to get as much light directly underneath them. What you tend to find with these as well is the areas that have more detail, more ridges, and nooks and crannies, you can get a nice effect on. So like the areas like the lower legs, because you've got the different pieces of the foot, and the leg armour, and also the power pack on the back as well, that has got a lot of little details that you can highlight to give that a really good look. Painting the inside of the shield there, just giving that base coat onto the big plain sections at the back of it there. So now I'm adding some Vallejo White to the McCrag Blue just to give that a slightly lighter shade. And all we're going to do here is start working on highlighting this model. So you want to think about where you've just applied the McCrag Blue. You want to apply this blue to maybe about 50% of the area that you've applied the McCrag Blue. You're not going to have this lighter highlight going down as far on curved surfaces like the shoulder pads if the whole shoulder pad was visible or the helm if the whole helm was visible. So this is mainly for the top surfaces. You're going to give these a good coat of this. Now, despite you doing less paint with this layer than you have done in previous layers, these layers do consecutively take longer. So as you're doing finer and finer highlights, they do tend to take a little bit longer as you're concentrating on where the light is going to catch it and the smaller details and getting that to look right as well. So one more thing about the light coming down from above and where that light's going to hit, you're going to try and start highlighting it there. So like the top of the power pack, and part way down the back you've got that little domed surface and then below that so you'd have more shade below the domed surface you'd have the top half of the dome part 
highlighted the bottom part not so much this video will just show you the entire process of painting up the power armor and how I do that and how I do those highlights So prior to this, as I said, the Itrix guard here was painted up or shaded for the shading video we did the other week. And it was the model that had the shade put all over him rather than one that just had it put on the details. You can see on the legs here, the highlights are starting to come together. We're painting only the top half of that kneecap, you don't want the highlights to be underneath it because the light wouldn't be catching the underside as much as it would the top. You wouldn't be highlighting the whole of that shin either, you're just going to be highlighting the bit that's going to be catching the most light at the front of the miniature, with the part that's directly underneath the model being a lot more shaded. You can see here that we're highlighting the top of the power pack. i say the power pack is a really good area. You can get a lot of good highlights on there and make it really stand out. It's a shame it's on the back of the model. So when you're looking at this power pack from the top, just have a look at where you can see when you're looking directly down from it and that's the kind of areas that you want to be highlighting. So we're going to be doing the top half of this dome section here. That's a bit broken up by the ultramarine badge in the middle of it there. And then the sides you want to highlight those bits and then do the bottom part of the V at the base of the power pack. If you do that in a V shape, you'll be leaving an extra bit of shade underneath that dome. That does give the impression that it's casting a shadow beneath it. So now I've added a little bit more Vallejo White to the McCrag Blue mix that we've just used. I'm going to do one final layer of highlights. Obviously, if you wanted to do more layers, you can do. You can do this a lot smoother, or you could use a different blending technique to get the lighter highlights there. But this is how I tend to do it for my models because it's a pretty quick and easy way to do it. So here you can see him highlighting the bottom edge here because he has the aquila on his chest, which would be casting shadows beneath that, so the light wouldn't really be catching the top part of that. So you would have that little highlight going on the underside. I'm going for also the highlight down the side of that chest plate. And he's got the three little kind of vents in the side of the armour. You want to be highlighting the bottom of those. So the edge which is facing uppermost. You'd be highlighting them just to give that look that the light is catching the edges of those. We've got the edge of the collar, which goes around the helmet too. Again, when you were highlighting the helmet previously, and you did about 50% of the area with the McCrag blue, on this you may be doing about 50% of the area where you did the previous mix. You're just giving that enough to make it look like the light is catching the top of the miniature. like so. You 
we are going to be painting the top edges of the wrist and the hand. I'll do paint the fingers just beneath where he's gripping at, just doing a little bit of a highlight on there, just to make them stand out when you see it from the side. And again, as we did on the leg with the previous highlights, you're just doing a little strips of highlighting here to make those stand out. So we're doing the edges on those knee guard bits. Now we're doing the highlight on top of the knee pad itself. Only quite a thin highlight, leaving that recess and the shade beneath the plate which sticks up above the kneecap. So again with these highlights you want to be thinking about where the light's coming from. So these edges on the shoe. And on the sort of like hinges by his ankle. I'm going to be doing the top edges of those. So once again these highlights are showing where the light's catching it. Making the details stand out quite nicely. Now for these side parts on the shin here, I'm just doing a slightly wider highlight at the bottom where more light will be catching it, and then a very thin highlight working up the shin to the left of the crux terminatus there. So now working on the backpack, you'll be able to see where these highlights are a lot easier with this colour. So you're doing that same kind of V shape at the very base there, but leaving the shaded sections going up to the top. And the only areas that you'd highlight on the bottom part is the ridges on the top of the kind of vents. So here you want to be trying to get this highlight on the top surfaces too, so the top of the little bolts, the little kind of half cut throughs there. All these little details on the side to make it look like the light is catching those edges. Now the top of the power pack, it's up to you how you want to do it. I tend to do these horizontal lines, then the little parts at the bottom of the vents at the top there. And also sometimes I'll do a couple of vertical ones as well. If I'm doing the vertical ones, I try and keep the vertical ones on the same side. So if it's on the right hand edge on one side of the power pack, I'll put it on the right hand edge of the other as well just to make it look like the light is maybe at a slight angle and catching both of those edges more than anything else. But then on these edge parts here where the two exhausts are on either side, I will do highlights on each side of those sections just to make them stand out a little bit. This is basically how I do the layering for all my Space Marines. So no matter the colour, it's the same technique using three different shades. Sometimes I will use one highlighted one, but that is the overall effect. So here you can see the finished highlights on a miniature, how it stands out quite well. And that is just with three layers of paint. You've got the McCrag blue, the first highlight, and then the final highlight. If you're just doing it three layers, that's what you can achieve with it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below. Thanks very much.